Hi, so uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take data for, that comes from this microcontroller, send it through uh, the interwebs to add a fruit IO to this sketch right here, and then uh, it'll be picked up by the microcontroller with the LED strip to change its light. So you'll notice that it's not uh, an immediate sort of response, but it does actually come down and happen. So um, the uh, we'll, we'll start out, um, this is just a NeoPixel strip. It's, uh, you know, what, all I'm doing is I'm changing the values of the red, I'm changing the red, green, blue values um, to the same. So it's a, it's white, but it's, what changes is the brightness. So the Arduino sketch is kind of straightforward. Um, We've got uh, the NeoPixel library here. We've got the LEDs, uh, you know, all the stuff that you need to turn on the, the, the strip. Uh, and then this uh, variable right here that takes in, um, so it, it takes in the values from the serial monitor uh, that will be sent from our P5 sketch. So inside of the setup, we turn on the serial communication. We say LED begin and show, and so this starts communication and then blanks out the, the lights. And then in the loop, every time through, we say if there's serial available, and it's somewhere inside of the buffer uh, on the microcontroller, read that value in. And this parse int, what it does is it reads in the value. And so we're sending bytes somewhere between 0 and 255. And this just parses that out into an integer that we can then use to change the values of the RGB channels in our LEDs. And we write that out, wait for a moment, and we're off to the races. So uh, this is a fairly straightforward sketch. It just takes serial data from the port and then writes that to the LEDs. Uh, in our uh, P5 sketch, uh, what we're doing is we've got a variable right here. Oh, I should mention this right now. The P5 serial control application can, will allow you to have multiple uh, microcontrollers connected to multiple sketches at the same time in your computer. So this right here I know is the Arduino 101. Uh, that's this one. And then this serial port right here is the uh, Nano Every. Now, I, I know this because I checked this inside of the uh, Arduino IDE beforehand. So um, it doesn't, so this is nice because this will actually tell you what board is on what port. So I can see that the, the, the 101 is on 1412-401 and the Nano Every is on 1412-501. Um, the P5 uh, serial control application does not have that information on there. So you just need to go back and double check if you've got multiple microcontrollers talking to multiple sketches. On your computer. So um, this, remember, also gets updated here uh, inside of your uh, your sketch. Obviously, if you're doing this with somebody else remotely, and this is what this is really designed for, so you could get two people in different locations communicating with one another, this isn't a concern, but it's just something I wanted to point out so you understood how I was getting both microcontrollers on here talking to different sketches at the same time. So uh, on so I've got in the background here, this is the sketch that I showed in the previous video. It's just updating information every two seconds and sending it up to Adafruit IO. So we change this and we can see that the values change, the size of the circle changes. The sketch here that's receiving the data uh, has a serial object. Uh, it's got the URL for data, that, for the feed that we're gonna be pulling down. It's got a counter that we're using to just determine when we're going to make the request from the server. And then we've got two variables here. One holds the most recent data that we're interested in, and one holds the previous data that came from the server. This way, we're only sending information to the microcontroller when there's a change of sorts. We aren't just blasting information out whenever it's, it's, a, it, whenever it's available. So uh, create canvas, and then we've got a serial constructor right here. Then we open up the appropriate port, and that's kind of it in the setup. 
in the draw, we're um, incrementing this counter every time through the draw loop. And then every 120 times through the draw loop, we'll call this get data function. Uh, and then here you can see we're just, you know, erasing the background and drawing this circle and, you know, depending on the size and just writing out the text down here in the corner. Um, so uh, here we're just, we're getting, we're pulling this information in this get data function is really where everything's happening, right? So inside of here, we've got this function called HTTP get. This makes a get request to the Adafruit server. Uh, it takes the URL. It then says, okay, I'm expecting information in JSON format, uh, JSON JavaScript object notation. We've talked about this before. And then there's this anonymous, anonymous function right here that deals with the response when it comes back from the server. So we are printing out the response here. Uh, this is what, you know, one of the, um, actually it'll be easier if I just do this. Uh, so each response looks like this. Uh, here you can see it's got my username, some other information, uh, the name of the feed. And then what we're looking for here is the last value, right? So the last value is the last value that was published to the, um, to published to the server, right? Uh, and if we open up um, that, we can see right here, this is the information as it's getting published in real time. We'll just refresh it, right? So you can see, so we're sending out like 15, 16, et cetera. And if we go back down here and we look at it, we'll see 15, 16, right? Uh, so um, when we get this response, what we do is we just say, I'm printing it out in the console just as diagnostic information, but the latest data uh, variable gets set to that last value. So we say response.listValue, it sets the latest data inside of there. And then here I'm saying if the latest data is different than previous data, then print it out inside of the console and send it out uh, serially to the microcontroller. Then uh, the last thing I do, no matter what, is I set the uh, previous data variable to equal whatever the latest data is, right? So now we'll see if I, uh, turn this knob, we'll be able to see it change actually in multiple locations. So this is the sketch that's actually sending the data. This is the sketch that's receiving it. And then uh, this window right here is actually the, the Adafruit uh, IO uh, input, right? So I'm just going to uh, do this. You can see the values change right here. I'm going to pull um, uh, this out a little bit just so you can see uh, how things change uh, over time across all of these, right? So this is, um, again, this is what's sending. This is what's, uh, this is the central part. You'll see the values change down here. Then this is where you'll see things receive. And there'll be a delay between me turning the knob and the LEDs on the strip changing, but hopefully it won't take too long. So I'm gonna turn this up and we'll see that so we'll see the feeds here, 149, 102, 200. We can see the same things here, 149, 202, 200. And this LED strip got way brighter, right? So I can crank this all the way up. And perceptually, I don't know, and there's a little bit of a change there perceptually, not a huge one, but um, if I bring this back down, let's see it drop off. So there we go. 152, 153, right? So it's a little bit more than half brightness. We'll bring it down a little bit more. And uh, so, yeah, so now this is much dimmer, right? So you can see here, this is how we can use a service like Adafruit IO as a glue between sending information from uh, one system to another. Now, there are other services that can get plugged into this, um, you know, one of the ones that we'll look at next is called If This Then That. Uh, and so we'll take a look at how we can have uh, If This Then That trigger different things in our, uh, in our microcontrollers based off of the information that goes through this service.